You live down here? This just back door. Front entrance over there. Makes sense. Whoa! Is that the cloud sea down there? We're so high up. Nice view, eh? Tora likes to just sit and watch cloud sea sometimes. You have a wonderful home. <laughs> anyway, um, Rex Rex. Rex Rex? Rex Rex, Tora explain other reason I help you. You see, Tora always wanted to make driver friends. Ah, interested in drivers, are you? But of course. Tora think it's amazing how Driver and Blade join spirits together to make big power. Tora really want to be sidekick of Rex Rex. Um, you know my name is just Rex, right? One Rex, not two. What is point? Well, nothing, I guess. It just sounds a bit different from what I'm used to. Double name just show Tora's respect. Respect for great driver. Rex Rex should be proud. I'm not sure I've earned all that yet. Oh, all right. You can call me Rex Rex if it makes you happy. But instead of all this sidekick stuff, can't we just be friends? Really? Tora will be friend of Rex Rex? Hooray! <laughs> what a funny little guy. Hey, Tora, do you know much about this town? Huh? You wouldn't happen to know where the army takes prisoners, would you? Rex, you're not planning to... We have to save Nier and Dromark. I thought you'd say that. Oh! You talk about Driver and Blade who were with Rex Rex before Tora's daring rescue! Yeah. Meh meh. Tora would have to ask around town for info like that. Mm. Before we do anything, time for food! All of today's running around make Tora hungry. Need food to help Rex Rex. I'm a little peckish too. Can't we eat later? I want to find Nier and Dromok as soon as possible. <laughs> Stomach of Rex Rex tell different story. I... I can't help it, can I? Um... If it's all right with everyone, I could cook something. Pyra? I didn't know you could cook. <laughs> well, as long as fire is involved, I can do almost anything. Fry, steam, grill, you name it. Whoa! If you want ice cream, though, you might have to find someone else. Well, you can't have everything. Tora, do you have any ingredients I could work with? Just what in the pantry there? Not much, really. Tora, sorry. It doesn't seem wise to go out and buy more supplies, so we'll have to make do with what we have. Let's see what we got, then. Glitter spuds, sumpkins. Oh, and here's an oil oyster and a single meaty carrot. Oh, and hot oranges too. These aren't bad ingredients at all. All foods that can be eaten with no cooking. Not how Tora usually eat. That's a bit depressing. We aren't much better ourselves, you know. I guess you're right. So what do you think, Pyra? Can you make anything with this? Yes, I think this should be enough. I'll just use the kitchen, okay? Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time, uh, she was finding it very difficult to walk a few inches right there, so she just used the, her ultimate power. Uh, last time, we saw our first low battery warning, and now we're seeing the one for the other side of the Joy-Con. No. We made it to Toragoth, explored the city a fair amount, saw all that we could see in the limited scope of the place without setting off the Ardanian Empire, right before we did that anyway, and Nia was promptly captured. This time, I'm changing my controllers. More importantly, we have this going on over here. Look forward to that later. This is somewhat of a crafting system, and one of the uses for all of those collectibles that we've been picking up along the way. Part of the reason why I was so diligent about that. We have more than enough ingredients to make this glitter bake a reality, so let's go for it. If only we had some more sumpkins and glitter spuds. They're so fun to say. Oh man, this is delicious. Oh, yum, yummy. So super, very tasty. Simply exquisite. I haven't eaten this well 
in 120 years. I'm glad you liked it. It seems like I did okay. I was worried I'd have gotten a little rusty over the years. It didn't taste rusty at all. Uh, um, I mean... But Tora is curious. Pyra is fire-using blade, yes? When Tora broke that water pipe, Pyra could still make fire. Come to think of it, you're right. That Bridget, the Imperial Blade, she used fire abilities just like Pyra, but the water seemed to douse much of her strength. So, what are you saying? This world full of elemental energy called ether, yes? Ether comes in forms like fire, water, and wind. While battling, drivers and blades both draw power from ether. But fire not good with water. Other blade women got splooshy with water, so fire power's all done. But Pyra and I were able to use our powers with no problem. Indeed. They were unaffected. Why? Um, well, my powers don't come from fire. Meme? If power's not fire, why look like flames? That may be a little complicated to explain. Go on, then. Tora like complicated things a lot. <sighs> well, um, I, uh, 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 it... Knock it off, Tora. Can't you see you're making her uncomfortable? Eh. Everyone has things they'd rather not talk about. Right? I'm sorry. I'm sure... I'll be able to tell you about it soon enough. Don't worry about it. Right now, we need to think about how to rescue Nia. First, we go around town and find all information we can. Hmm. Yes, I dare say that we're all wanted criminals by this point. Pyra sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, friends. Tora has an idea. Special Inquisitor Morag! To what do we owe this extreme pleasure? Had we but heard of your grace's visit, we could have prepared a suitable... I don't stand on ceremony, Consul. I'd rather you just did your job. Y your grace? Someone of your standing deserves to be treated as such. You are his majesty's representative. Please permit us to lay on a meal befitting your grace. Until then, we would be honored if... You made impressive time. I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Oh, Lady Bridget! If we have found the Aegis, then there is no time to waste. But I fear the passage has taken its toll on our engines. The Aegis? H how do you...? Is there a problem, Dougal? N uh, not at all, Your Grace. Good. Now, you've captured a driver from Torna. I am going to speak with her. What? Uh, why do you want...? Dougal. I don't remember asking for your opinion. Y yes Your Grace. I'll take you to her right away. So, you are the Torna Ruffian. I must say you look a little different from your poster. A little different? Whoever drew that should be the one in jail. <laughs> yes, I would be angry too. You can drop the friendly act. You won't name your friends? My friends? I'm not so sure I'd call those trigger-happy Torna goons friends. I see. I think we have our wires crossed here. I am not talking about Torna. Huh? You're not? No, I was referring to your more recent traveling companions. The driver boy and his blade. Rex and Pyra. Well, that was easy. Damn it!
This looks like it could actually work. Good idea, Tora. Right! Let's look for friends of Rex Rex! I love Pyra's I'm so sorry. <laughs> The delivery of that is utterly perfect. I love the performance of Pyra so much. Her actress did such a good job. I don't want to get into acting too much, though, because usually I'm one for... Well, I would say immersion above all else, though, but I'm kind of explaining game mechanics with math all the time now, aren't I? So let's do it for a little bit. I have to say, I am a fan of this dub. I do have issues with it. Um, I kind of wanted to give people time to develop their own opinions about it before I'd really speak of my own. First of all, I want to say, I love Tora so much. He is adorable, he is cast so well, and I don't get why so many people say that he is annoying. He's so soft-spoken and quiet. I don't get what's grating about that. <laughs> his design's so cute, too. I like his denim overalls and everything, and his tiger pattern. Tora being Japanese for tiger, of course. He's such a soft-spoken, cute little character. I don't get why people find him grating and obnoxious. I really don't understand that criticism. Some Ardanian dude was saying they were going to execute the prisoner within the next few days. So those Torna guys are pretty bad, right? I heard they killed loads of drivers to steal their core crystals. Pretty amazing if the Empire really captured one of them. The Empire is so cool! I wonder what they'll, what they'll do with this execution thing anyway. I've never seen one before. I gotta go see for myself. You guys should come along too. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, that's about the most lighthearted way we could have had that information delivered. If I can give the English version points on one more thing, it's that Nia's performance in English I personally prefer. Uh, her rough and tumble personality fits her Welsh accent. I think it makes her stand out more among the cast. In Japanese, they gave her this very high-pitched voice. I don't know if it's because she stood out to me so much the first time I heard her, but I just can't get into that specific voice for her. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm only really interested in plants, so I don't keep up with the latest rumors. I want to become a botanist and more ordained, but my parents keep saying it's too dangerous. It's been a whole decade now since more ordained and Uriah ceased hostilities. And sure, there's been this nasty group called Torna popping up in the news lately, but still. It's not like anything bad's gonna happen while more ordained, well, more ordained's in charge. Doesn't this peaceful town prove that? If there's one other Japanese voice I find grating, it's Gramps. I just don't think he sounds younger. <laughs> On the flip side, it's only fair for me to say the things that I prefer about the Japanese version. I hate to say it, but if there's a subpar performance, I think it's Rex. He's not all bad. He is really good in those scenes where he's bickering with Nia and being a snot-nosed kid. I love those. It's just that when he's yelling in fights, he gets better as it goes on, but early on, I can't deny it, he is the weaker performance for me. I like his character, I just don't like his voice that much. Apparently, the Torna member that the Ardanian Empire captured was some Gormati girl called Nia. That name seems familiar somehow. Didn't the old Lord of Ekil a decade ago or so have... Actually, let's not talk about that. It's not a happy thing to think about. Anyway, I told you all this because I want to let you know early that there is a Japanese voice option available for free on the eShop. I know that voice options is a deal maker for a lot of people, and this game has that. <laughs> I'm just doing what I personally prefer, wanted to tell you what I think are the pros and cons to each version, and of course the Japanese version is going to have better lip syncing and you might want that. The grown-ups do seem to be talking about secret complicated stuff a lot lately. Apparently there's some kind of dangerous people causing trouble. It's been, only been 10 years since the war between Moradan and Uriah ended, why would they stir up more trouble? It sounds like a real pain, I hope the Ardanian soldiers will be able to protect us. Up to this point, though, I do think pretty positively of the story, though. Um, I think that the scene with Rex and Pyra meeting is really nice, very touching. Uh, the way that they trust each other and the context under which they do it, where she gives him half of his life force. That's one of my favorite scenes, and I love seeing it again. A lot of the early scenes are fantastic, even on a repeat playthrough. Um, I do like the story quite a lot, and the characters are a real high point for me in it. So I just kind of wanted to give some thoughts on that while we're running around town a little bit. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? Forget about that! Did you know this? Apparently, whenever a blade is born, it has to be registered with the Praetorium of Indol! 
wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, so I bet that guy who just got to be a driver will have to go there sooner or later. When I grow up, I want to be a driver and visit Indol too. How funny. Uh, I would know nothing about that. Uh, I mean, I would know lots about that. Yes, uh, registered driver uh, is my middle name. Yeah. We'll go over this way. Finally, this place is uh, no longer blocked. Did Rex Rex know they're recruiting over there new for new drivers? Yeah, I saw that earlier when we first arrived in the city. Uh, Rex Rex should try too. Chance of success basically 100%. I'm wanted by the Ardanian Empire right now, remember? It seems like a bad idea to make myself conspicuous. Rex Rex make good points. Toro was just too curious to see what kind of blade Rex Rex awaken. At any rate, I don't need to awaken a blade, do I? I've already got Pyra. Come now, Rex. Don't tell me you thought drivers could only bond with a single blade. What? Is that not right? Not at all. Many drivers have more than one. With Nia gone, we're a bit short on numbers right now. We might not hold up all that well in a fight. Perhaps it would actually be a good idea to get yourself a new blade. A new blade opens up new possibilities in battle, after all. Hmm. It would stop you from putting so much strain on Pyra as well. Seems like a good thing all around, if you ask me. Well, if Pyra doesn't mind, I guess I could, couldn't hurt to try. I don't have any objections. The more the merrier. Then it's settled. The question is, where are we gonna get ourselves a core crystal? Now, that's one question I can answer. I happen to have one stored away for just such an occasion. Where have you been keeping this thing? Where Gramps hide core crystal with such small body? Yeah! The key to awakening a new blade is to foster a powerful resonance with the driver's spirit. Focus your whole mind on the core crystal as you touch it. And to hold a clear picture in your mind of the blade you wish to awaken. I'm not sure I really understand, but I'll give it a try. I hope you awaken a wonderful blade. The unnamed core crystal. I'm going to awaken this and it's going to be a one crown rarity common blade with wind as its element and knuckle claws as its weapon. I ain't psychic or anything, it's just the way that things always are. The name of- oh, it's actually two crowns, uh... Well, okay, I guess I'm not quite as great as I thought. Rex's ability to resonate with core crystals has been unlocked! You can bond with a blade at any time by going to Bond Blade. Core crystals aren't much use just lying around, so it can't hurt to resonate with them and see what you get. Also, the higher a driver's luck stat value, the better their chances of awakening certain very special blades. Once you have yourself a new blade, you'll need to engage it so that it can take part in battle. Up until now, Rex has had to rely on Pyra alone for support in battle, but now you'll be able to engage a variety of other blades and expand your support options. To take advantage of different blades in battle, press directional buttons corresponding to each blade's face icon to perform a blade switch. In no time at all, the blade who was previously supporting you will retreat, and the new blade will take their place on the battlefield. Of course, switching blades will change both your weapon and your available arts. Different weapons have different benefits and drawbacks in battle, so use blade switches tactically after considering the current situation. That looks like a good one. Meh meh, fur always stand on end when Taurus see Driver resonate with Crystal. So cool! Hey, don't look at me like that. You're making me feel weird. Well, uh, looks like we've got a new recruit anyway. Let's go and find out what actually happened to Nia. Rex, not so fast. Huh? What's up? Aren't you going to kit your new blade out? You can tune up the weapon with a core chip from that smithy there. If Rex Rex never used core chip before then, now very good time to start. You can really tell the difference between a driver who uses core chips and one who doesn't. Yeah, they hit for two damage. I'm starting to understand. Now for the main top. That over there is an ox core shop. I don't suppose you had a lot of call to go in there before you became a driver. You're right about that. I used to wonder what all that strange gear was for, though. Perhaps we should head over there and give it a try, then. 
Aux cores are just the thing for supplementing a blade's power. They're all different types. Some boost defense, some make strong against insects, or stronger at nighttime, meh. The number of aux cores you can equip varies from blade to blade, mind. Interesting stuff. Now, this is the important part, so listen up. Usually, when you get an aux core, it's in an empty state. You won't be able to boost your blade with it empty. Okay, so how do you fix that then? Huh, I see. So this gizmo here makes aux cores usable. You catch on fast. That's right. This machine takes collectibles and raw aux cores and refines them into something useful. Here's one you can have a go with. I've been saving it up for this very occasion. Where are you keeping this? Oh, we're not gonna find out. Rex Rex, best not think about where he stash it. <laughs> Tora, you and I are on the same page. Tora's right about that. It's not much good without collectibles though here. <laughs> Did he just admit that he uh, has a lot stashed away there? <laughs> uh, you're good to go, Rex. Refining. Got it. And as soon as we're done, let's go and look for some info about Nia. Man, Rex is obsessed with this rescue mission. This is the other and more important use for materials other than crafting. Uh, I just mainly go for whichever ones I have the most of. It does not matter which items that we go for. I'll take four of that, and I'll take four of this. This will boost our critical hit rate by 12%. This is multiplicative and not additive. So for instance, if we have a 10% critical hit rate, it just becomes 11% and not 22. Since you're already standing in front of an Oxcore shop, let's revisit the topic of Oxcores for a moment. At shops like these, you can get your ox cores refined. You need collectible items to refine ox cores. The number of collectible items you'll need to, uh, is defined individually for each ox core. Once you have all the collectibles you need, you can head to your shop to get your ox core refined. But watch out! The higher the value of the ox core, the more difficult it's likely to find all the necessary items. Oh, okay, oh, boy, I dodged a bullet. But if you want to, if you want to be able to refine your ox cores as soon as you get them, you'll need to always be on the lookout for collection points on your travels. Ox cores are a complicated name for just accessories for your weapons, giving them additional effects. Oh, that's a lot of information dumped all at the same time. So let's unpack this really quickly. Pyra would do good to have this on her. Two percent more critical rates, not a lot, but it's certainly better than nothing. And speaking of getting engaged to blades, I love how Rex was so just, uh, I don't know if I want to equip another blade. Uh, is Pyro okay with that? It's really cute. By equipping different blades, we get increases to different stats. This one's giving us more agility and more ether. This differs from blade to blade, so be sure to hey, keep that in mind. you're the boss. If we go look at Konjiki here, his affinity chart is downright puny compared to Pyra's. On top of that, the amount of trust necessary to get these level ups is similarly teeny. Pyra needs uh, 1600 for level three right here. This guy only needs uh, 50. His battle specials, he can spawn an HP potion right here. He can absorb critical damage dealt as HP. Uh, when landing a hit, he can restore 30% of damage dealt to the whole party. Uh, and now for his battle skills, he only has one, and that's increased damage dealt at max affinity. He's got some field skills as well. Common blades can have good abilities. Don't write them off. They are actually quite good. This guy is not just simply common trash meant as filler until you get better stuff. He can be pretty nice. Note that we can only equip two blades at a time even though, even though there's three buttons there. Good thing to be mindful of. And on top of that, we can also scroll between different blades right here. I think, ooh, that critical hit rate is a thing of beauty. 1300 gold is a lot, but I think I'm gonna go for that just so we can see this guy in action. We'll apply that right away. Very convenient menu right there. These are some peak knuckles. If I may say something else about blades, where are you? There you are. It's that Pyra's disguise is really cute and really clever. Uh, Rex just leaned out of the first person view because I was looking behind. <laughs> That's a photo bomb and a half. Anyway, Pyra is disguised as a Gormati, hence those little spaces for the ears on top. What's kind of a shame about this disguise is that it doesn't show up in menu, she just looks normal. The artist went to the trouble of drawing her a portrait for this, but it was never finished or inserted into the game. It's a shame because I assure you, it would have been very loved. We had these touched on a little bit before, but Gormani are the native residents of Gormont. Uh, Nia was touched on being one earlier, as Rex mentioned her ears, and they're usually depicted as having a Welsh accent. This is something that I think could kind of go unnoticed by an American player, as a lot of people would just kind of look at this whole cast and go like, oh, British, to everything, even though they're completely different accents. So I thought I'd draw attention to that, because it's another aspect of the English dub that I really appreciate, that they didn't just get 
all of the talent from one location, you have different accents portraying different countries, and I think that goes a long way. I'll be pointing out all instances of this as well as the different races that appear throughout the world. Anyway, what I came over here to do was to climb up this tower. It's quite a ways out of the way, and it's not immediately obvious there's really a way through here. I had to jump through some rooftops to get all the way up here. Because up here, look who it is. Hi there. View from here is very grand. Furara not see such wonderful view before in all of life. Furara know what friends thinking. Life of Furara not very long yet. But that beside point. Watching people of Gormot from here, Furara think they generally too calm and relax for their own good. That because Gormot people born in lovely land of plenty food and nature and not much problems. There was war at one point, but that no change basic nature of people much. Furara know what friends thinking. Nopon who only li alive for five years should not make judgment about life. Uh huh. Anyway, a Furara feeling hungry now, want to gorge self on mushroom. Voltus Trade Guild Walkie Walkie Guidebook say, no good to try to do anything while Tum Tum is empty. So gorging self on mushrooms is correct goal of Walkie Walkie. Anyway, maybe we meet again. Best of luck. I briefly mentioned this the first time that we met Furara, but they have a trophy over their head. Whenever you see this, it means the NPC has some kind of special function. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll get, like, an item out of them, but they're special in some way, and Furara is indeed very special. It's a long way down. We're really oi up here. But don't worry, you can handle the fall. Oh. After all, it's a known fact that metal shoes are very shock absorbent. After that fateful encounter, let's go into a dark alley. I may or may not have made it nighttime again, just so it can be a dark alley. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ordanians recently? Taruni know this, of course. But Taruni is informant by trade, cannot provide information without proper compensation. The informant is willing to give us this information for 3,000 gold. Uh, I'll be back later. Taruni offers super special bargain price, and friends still not purchase? If friends short on cash, maybe should consider go outside a town and defeat monster. Normally, Taruni charge for this kind of information too, but this time provides specially for free. Hoping to see friends again. Well, if we don't want to spend the money, I guess we have no choice but to go talk to the military instead. Yeah, about that cat you kidnapped. Who are you people? Uh oh, maybe it wasn't a good idea to ask an Ordanian soldier. Um. There was something I wanted to ask, but now I've clean forgotten what it was. <laughs> if it's the informant you're after, go pay for it at the- If it's information you're after, go pay for it at the local informant. Chatting with the populace isn't our job, you understand. I'm, uh, I'm just gonna steal your stuff here. Uh, overdrive protocol. Oh, that's actually kind of an interesting item. Uh, that doesn't have a potential use right now. We can get some core crystals right here and just go awaken them in a dark alley. Preferably a different one than the one the informant's in. And then down here, Dward. Hmm, can't say I have. If it's information you're after, why don't you go visit the informant? I was afraid you'd say that. That's the very last one that we have to go and talk to, so I guess 3,000 gold it is. I like this guy who's afraid of the informant. He's just peeking around this corner and then, uh, uh, uh no, uh, I, I can't do it. Here's your ill-gotten money. Am I admitting to more criminal activity right there? Thanks much for custom. Inside Titan Battleship, Gormati girl being held prisoner. Unfortunately, Taruni not yet receive intelligence specifying prisoner name. But rumors say big ship arrived for sole purpose of holding one measly girl. People of Goramont getting along quite well with the, uh, the Empire nowadays, so trouble like this not very welcome. That seemed to be opinion of most Toragoth resident. That about extent of information to Rooney now. Enough to satisfy friends? Thanks. We could awaken more core crystals now that we have some, but I don't see much point in doing that right now. I'm gonna wait until we have some more core crystals and just awaken a lot at once. Now, if there's something else that I can talk about with all this going on, 
there's a blade album right here. We go in here, and it shows us all the blades that we have had in our party at one point or another. Don't view this. There are horrible spoilers in here. Silhouettes that are remarkably obvious as certain characters that we're going to be meeting. And trust me, you really don't want that fresh in your mind. This is one of my least favorite things in the game. Whatever you do, don't look through this at the different silhouettes. I just needed to say that early once we had the ability to freely awaken blades. Oh, from doing that, we got development level one with Gormod. That's kind of nice. Didn't think we'd be saying anything nice about that guy, but look at me now. With all that information gathered, it's time to head back to Tora's and formulate our plan. Nia and Dromark executed. It doesn't bear thinking about. But getting aboard that warship will be no mean feat. We're going to need an ironclad plan. Army port is under heavy guard. I guess we'll just have to mount a full-on attack. No, Rex, we can't put everyone in danger. Right, sorry. There. This is one of the Grand Arbor's routes, right? If this map is correct, it goes all the way from the key to the hull of the warship. And here, it looks like some kind of cargo entrance. Could we sneak on that way? Oh, right. No one will spot us if we sneak in from below. Security light around this entrance. At night, not even workers here. Looks like this is our only option. Then it's a plan. <laughs> Tora? Tora have something to show you. What's this, then? Nobody ever see this before. Secret of Tora. An artificial blade. An artificial blade? I can't believe it. Tora have always wanted to be driver of blade. But Tora... Uh, Tora has no potential to awaken Core Crystal. How could you know that? Surely you just have to try and... Oh, you did, didn't you? Yes, one year ago, Tora applied to drive a recruitment man. Oh, dearie me. Oh, Tora, you mean you... It was bad. Tora had nosebleed for three days. Just, uh... Nosebleed? What you mean, just? People die from loss of blood, you know. Yeah, but from a nosebleed. Anyway, moving on. For a near-death experience, you're awfully casual about this. Anyway, back to Tora's blade. When complete, even no potential Tora can be a driver. This is simply incredible. You built this blade from scratch, Tora? It was started by Grampy Pon and Dada Pon. But Grampy Pon die, and Tora still not know where Dada Pon go to. Oh. So Tora will finish Blade myself and become a driver like always wanted. Then Dada Pon hear about Tora's success and come back home, yes? Oh, Tora. By the by. For, uh, this blade, as far as I can see, it looks complete. What is there left to do? <laughs> All Tora have left to do is buy missing parts. But Tora have no money at all. Oh, really? Really? Nothing. At all. Not even one gold. So you're asking for a loan? Loan? <laughs> um, closer to generous donation. Just like a nopon? <laughs> Always shrewd when it comes to gold. But, but, but if 
Tora completes artificial blade, combat capabilities will be big help on mission. Well, yeah. If it works, she may have a point. So, how much exactly do you need? Oh, no more than 60,000 gold. 60,000? Do you want a kidney as well? Calm down, Rex. I think we owe Tora our help. If it's just money he needs, I may be able to assist. Assist? How exactly? Nothing illegal, I hope! Don't even joke, Gramps. This is a natural crystal. It should fetch around 60,000. No way. We can't let you sell that. But... No, it wouldn't be right. That's it, I'm paying for the parts myself. Very admirable. Mama! Rex Rex is too generous! This blade of yours had better be seriously useful, though, Tora. Ah, leave that to Tora! Well then, let's go, I guess. Yippee! Will they really be okay? I suppose they'll have to be. <laughs> Nothing illegal, I hope. Also, how can you look at Tora, where he says he hopes that Datapon will hear of his success and come home with that face and think that, oh, he's so great. No, he's so precious. So what do you actually need to finish this artificial blade? One perfect range sensor and three Bion connectors. I don't think I've ever heard of either of those. Perfect range sensor supplements function of eyes in artificial blade. Quite pricey item, but very important. And the Bion connectors? That have many uses, but mostly to prevent hat fall off. Would an ordinary piece of string not suffice? So, um, where can we buy these items? At Margia's Odds and Ends! Is just off to the left after entering Torigoth City. I'm pretty sure we must have walked past that area before. Alright, let's go! Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles come 2! Out, come out! We are going to complete Tora's greatest invention, presumably. I can't imagine that he's done too many other things in life of this caliber. You can kind of see it in there. Uh, I was trying to do a cool thing, though, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. This blanket keeps us out. It'll stop any robbers, just like those blankets he hid under to hide from burglars as a kid. See you guys then.